Hope everyone's doing all right today. I'm trying to get set up here to go live on my computer as well as on my uh, my cell phone. And I'm going to type in what I'm going to do today. Um, today we'll be covering um, Department of Labor, Department of Labor, particularly strengthen the unemployment safety net. So. American budget. And labor. And this is for kids. So everything's coming up uh, on my computer. I like to do it on my computer. And then I'll, of course, I'm going simultaneously with some of my phone. It's just easier to upload that way. Um, but I want to go into, again, this this series I'm going over will be uh, on the American, an American budget. Let's see, an American budget. Again, it talks about, they talk about efficiency, efficient, effective, and accountability. Uh, and again, I've been studying this for probably the last six months. I got this six months ago because I'm, I'm very intrigued by how a company or a city, local government, our states are, are being run. And I got a plethora of information here. And again, this station here is to educate. And if, if, if we entertain, great. But uh, we have enough entertainment going on, to be honest with you. And so I want to make sure that uh, the information, I'm taking my time out. You know, it's enough people laughing. It's enough people crying, too. Uh, however, I want to, again, be in the middle and just try to give you some news you can actually use uh, at the ballot box when you go vote, whether it's November or the next city council election or the next, you know, county commissioner election, whatever the case may be, and, you know, who to hold accountable, again, at the end of the day for a decision that's been made in your particular state or county or local government. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to just read this line for line, then I'm going to talk about it a little more in detail, uh, or just you can shoot me an email if you have questions, uh, and we'll go from there, messenger, whatever the case may be. All right? It says, strengthen the unemployment safety net. That's one, a goal they want, they want to do. Uh, states are responsible for funding the benefits uh, they provide under the state-administered UI program, which meaning unemployment insurance program. In order to avoid raising taxes on employers in the middle of a recession, uh, states should build a um, build balances that would allow them to cover benefits when unemployment spikes. Despite years, despite years of recovery, the Great Recession, many states' UI accounts, again, unemployment insurance accounts, are still not adequately financed. As of September 30th, 2017, only 24 states had sufficient reserves to weather another recession. Okay, that's prior. Nobody knew a pandemic was coming, so guess where we at? Only 24 states had adequate reserves at, in 2017, not knowing that we will be in the position that we are in right now regarding the pandemic. <laughs> uh, the budget pr proposes to strengthen the incentive for states to prepare for the next recession. <clears throat> I think we're already here, but anyway. Um, and adequately fund their unemployment insurance systems by reducing federal taxes in states with particularly low reserve low reserve balances. Again, no one's seen. Um, so I'm not going to tell you, but again, this is the educator. So let's find out where your state ranks at on the uh, unemployment insurance scale, and that may give you a little insight to why they want to get everyone back to work which could be a good thing. You know, if you're ready to get a bunch of caskets, and as we see, I'm not just making this up, we see what's going on. If you were to send people back out there without the proper uh, PPE or tools to function efficiently, effectively, as they call themselves, efficiently, effective, and accountable, being accountable. Uh, so I think it's just um, something to think about. This was put together... <laughs> 
years before the pandemic. Again, no one saw this coming, but now that it's here, we're now seeing uh, a ton of uh, blind spots. I'll call them blind spots. Uh, spots where they would say things were not adequately funded. And I don't think that just rolls over into our unemployment system. I think that kind of, I call it spillage, it kind of spills over into some other areas as well. And unfortunately, now you realize, hmm, we're not as strong an area as we thought we were. So now we need to either cut sling load or start trying to get the necessary uh, items and resources to <clears throat> push through this push through this time point, this timeline, this 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 th that pandemic that we're going through right now, this epidemic, but this pandemic that we're going through right now. So I just think um everything happened for a reason. Don't don't know why. I can't I can't explain all that. Uh, again, I'm not here to give opinions. I'm stating the facts based off the budget of from the US government fiscal year twenty nineteen and I'm in the Department of Labor section, page seventy seven work out my information. So I'm not getting this off the Literally ending up somebody, somebody in some foreign country putting something up, and I'm downloading it. I'm telling you about it. No, I'm a little smarter than that. But that is that is crucial to understanding why people are having to make certain decisions about um, getting uh, getting people back in a building. Um, but if we're going to put people back in a building, that just makes. I'm a I'm a teacher, so I'm an educator, so I want to make sure. I lived 30, I did 29 and a half years in the Army, the military. So I want to make sure that you know, we always had the proper gear to go into combat. Always had a proper gear to go into war. No, this isn't war. However, this is a virus that you can't see. And, and by the time you see it, it's, kind of, it's really too late. So hopefully you have a, you know, you don't infect anybody else. The bottom line is I am a mask wearer. I don't argue with it. Do I like it? No. But I wear it because I don't want to infect my neighbors or the guy next door or the person at the grocery store. So it's bigger than just me. And I think <laughs> it's unfortunate that we got people ranting and raving about wearing something as simple as a mask. But as a former NBC guy, nuclear, biological, and chemical with the United States Army, as a former guy who used to put on things that are much heavier than a mask, we put our gear on much heavier and we're in it for a much longer time period so i go to put a mask on and go grocery shopping or something like that that doesn't bother me and it shouldn't bother you if you think about the bigger picture of things again i'm not going to rant i just think you know numbers don't lie people do so just take that for what it's worth i think the bottom line is um you have to be safe it's not just about you but the person next to you and i know we're not that selfish but we just don't care i hate to believe that about americans that I think well, I don't, we're, we're not at that point. I hope not. But again, <clears throat> uh, be policy driven. You know, everybody have opinions. Opinions are okay. Everybody have opinion. But make sure, you know, when you start talking about certain things that is policy driven, you can change policy. You know, your opinions don't matter because opinions are not in stone. They're just an opinion. But when you start dealing with policies, like I'm looking at a policy here. Or what they're attempting to do. Not all of it's going to go well. You know, we you might get 50% of it done, but 50% is better than nothing, or vice versa. So the problem you're facing today didn't happen overnight. Didn't happen in five or ten years. You know, unfortunate for the American people. I, I mean, I live in Texas, so I know we have a horrible voting record. You know, doesn't matter who's in office. We have a horrible voting record. So the bottom line, a lot of people, a lot of people in our society are not using their right as a citizen of the United States of America to vote. And that's a huge, huge plus. Um, you know, we, <laughs> we're in a market of free world, so that's a huge plus. So utilize that right to make your voice heard. I'm not telling you how to vote. I'm just saying vote. And, you know, just I'm going to throw some food for thought out there. I want to read this one quote first from uh, um, Mark Twain. Never let your schooling interfere with your education. That's a powerful quote from Mark Twain. Because I remember going through college in 04 and in 09. And then I got out, you know, I graduated and went back, you know, kept working in the military. And, and I got out of here, I retired, and I came into uh, moving around, ended up back in Texas. 
And I learned more in that time frame. I think I was just prepared, but I, I learned more in that time frame about people and about life and about situations and how I can better set myself up strategically to move forward and be more calculated, more more ca calculated, meticulous, and, and more um, more intentional in my more intentional in my movement and how I move. Because once you get a certain age, you don't have a lot of energy to waste. You know, every little energy you, you you expend, you know, you want to get an ROI. You know, we got a market and get an economic background or a business background ROI return on investment. You want to return on your investment. Not all investments go as well, but for the most part, as long as you're investing in yourself, investing something positive. Again, if you're tuning in to this to get, you know, a Kardashian feel or just bash somebody, that's not what I'm about. Number one. That's what I'm about. I'm here to inform, educate, and just make the world a better place through just information, sharing knowledge, sharing data, and just being here as a voice for you to realize, you know what, you're not by yourself, you're not alone, and I pray that you look forward to me doing more of these type of venues, because I think it's needed. I think currently our market is saturated with so much other stuff, which is Somebody's paying for it, you gotta have it. You don't like it, change the channel. There you go, change the channel. But anyway, I'm here to be an alternative for that. Okay, for people that really wanna know what's going on in the government, uh, local, state, and, and federal government. You know, just something just jumped in my head. I was looking at, I was looking at a couple of states, and I was looking at, you know, I looked at Texas, and I live here, to see, you know, uh, how much does it cost to run for, to get on a ballot? I don't think people sometimes realize, man, how do you get on a ballot? I'm going to change this, go into politics a little bit here, but how do you get on a ballot? How do you get on a state ballot? Well, um, you first of all, you want to go to, if you thought about getting on a ballot, you want to make sure that you find the right um, seat for yourself, the right position. I'll use a couple examples, actually, for the senator of Texas, it is $5,000 to get on a ballot. So a person has to pay the local party chair of the county $5,000 to get on the ballot to run for Senate of Texas. North Carolina is $1,700. It's a little difference there. Uh, I think governor is $3,750. Uh, your local county commissioner seats are, I think, about $1,250. Uh, county judge, I think, $1,750. But <laughs> it, it, I guess it's called pay to play, but you know that's where we're at, and I don't, and I hope, I don't think people will really understand that. But there are other methods to get on the ballot too. You can do a petition, but you want to make sure you do. Cause I've done both. If you do a petition route, you want to make sure that you know, um, you want to make sure that they spell a name properly, put the voter ID number on there that. You know, everything matches up that's legible because, again, uh, if you need, you know, 20,000, 500 signatures, yeah, you bring a 1,000, but only 100 of them they can read. Guess what? You just wasted your time. So you want to make sure that you don't waste your time and you move forward and you do everything the right way. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of mentors to hold your hand and take us through the process because, again, it, it is a process. So whether, so whether win, lose, or draw is irrelevant. It's about what are you doing to make your community, to be a pillar in your society, your community. I think at the end of the day, that's what it boils down to. I'm, I'm vastly approaching 12 minutes and 35 seconds. So again, this is just, I want to reiterate again, 24 states, relocate that. Um, only 24 states have sufficient um, reserves to weather a, another recession. And I think currently, I think we're at 11.4 unemployment for the nation. I don't know if that's the real or nominal. I have to do more research on employment. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have a real, you have a nominal, and you may have an aggregate. It got these numbers, and again, probably by design, might have your opinions, but I don't know what the real is. And I don't know what gauge they're using to come up with the nominal, but those things require a little more research and I can find it. But next time I'll, I'll have that to present it. But so what you see on television, they say, well, we're at 11%. I just double that number. <laughs> so that's just what I say. But anyway, 
But when they tell me, I just, okay, double that number, then I'll be, I know, I know where we're at as, as a nation moving forward or as a state. But again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it, by the way. Today is, again, no, no opinion, just facts. And be policy driven. And the day's message is brought to you today by B12 Fitness. Let me get that card up there for you. B12 Fitness Group. And as you go to the website, right there, www.b12training.fit. All right. And then we got, I got a product in here about Lean MR. See Lean MR? Get it right there. Boom, boom. Spin that around. Boom. Lean, lean MR. This is a chocolate protein shake. Again, this is a chocolate protein shake, and it is delicious. I love it. And again, this only has 180 calories. And we have over uh, 12, um, 21 grams of protein in a serving. 21 grams of protein in a serving. So again, I'm, I'm really into just making sure people are um, trying to be healthy, man, physically, spiritually, mentally, and just stay focused and understand that, uh, you know, you got one life to live. So uh, live the best one you have. All right? No opinion, just facts. This is Byron Bradford. You can call me Brad. You can call me Brad. I'm signing off, and I will see you. Uh, I will see you soon. Have a great day.